Welcome to Friday Night's video and our second Master Series. This is the ninth video in our second Master Series, and we're starting to look at the Spectrum Meter. So basically, as we get started here, that we kind of, what are we looking for? So there's a bunch of videos on this channel about sound, timbers, harmonics, you know, and things like that that you can look through. And there's a bunch of playlists for you to look through that kind of stuff. And noise, saturation, distortion, all those kind of things that you want to look at. But basically, when we get in there, you know, the spectrum meter is going to show us this information. That's not a complex waveform that's basically built from this information or this information is gotten from this information. Depends on how you look at it. This can be like a fast Fourier transform trying to take this information and get it to where you can see it like this. But basically, it's trying to show you the sinusoidal components inside of whatever you're listening to. Also, it's going to be showing you some other things. Basically, it's, you know, trying to show you the frequencies there, but it's, try, you know, the basic waveforms like square, triangle, and a sawtooth wave that are not really complex waveforms like a vocal or something like that. You know, you've got even, you got, the, this is odd harmonics on this square wave, the first harmonic, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. Same with the tri triangle wave, but they're at different levels. And like a sawtooth wave, it's got a smooth sound like, you know, if it can have a smooth sound like it, you know, violin is a good example of that you know it's got even and odd harm harmonics first fundamental harmonic and then it's got even harmonics odd harmonics even harmonics odd harmonics even odd even and on and so forth and so forth you know so basically you know there's a link on my channel that goes to um, a calculations network that was made by an individual and the one on finding harmonics as an actual calculator in there, you can put your fundamental frequency in there and figure out where your second harmonic is, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, so on and so forth from a fundamental frequency. It's a really cool site. And also, it can lay out the even and odd, the basic even and odd harmonics that you're going to be dealing with. Any more than that can sometimes get very complicated when you're dealing with music and music production as far as audio engineering is concerned. A lot of that stuff gets it gets really hard to try to pick a part to really work with well to do what you want to do other than some some higher low pass filtering and things like that maybe a little bit of notch filtering because it's very hard to work with some upper end tail content of whatever you're working with to be able to work with it accurately without taking it into something like matlab so most of the the primary even in non harmonics you're going to be dealing with and you know, a, a good example of like harmonic distortion, this waveform is obviously working with odd harmonics. There's the fundamental, there's the first odd harmonic, the second odd harmonic, the third harmonic, and the fourth odd harmonic. And you've got this stuff here. These are actually even harmonics inside of this. But the way it's laid out, it's probably harmonic distortion. And same with a lot of this up in here. So that you know, you're basically looking for your primary harmonics and then the rest of it you're trying to equate a lot of times it's part of the sound so you calling it distortion or a component of the sound can be debatable depending on if it's something that's consonant or dissonant meaning you like it in the sound or you don't makes it distortion or not does that make sense and sometimes we add saturation distortion to make things sound better and you know you i've pointed out out really clear on my channel using you know distortion saturation and noise as tools are some of the biggest tools you have in the studio to make things sound better you know we can be looking for things like that we can be looking for bandwidth you know there's different bandwidths as you go up the frequency spectrum and trying to keep that in mind so that as you're going up the spectrum you know what kind of bandwidth you're dealing with you know the bandwidth from the center frequency to how far that it's spread out. And that is, can a lot of times be stuff that's added in there that it's not a really clean sound. Or it can be like sideband distortion. Sideband distortion on either side of the fundamental that you're really shooting for, looking for, can cause this bandwidth issue at times. Which can be problematic and understanding you have a really dirty sound or a clean sound, being able to try to visualize that. 
also that you've got you can also have issues with you know trying to visualize reverberations you know reverberations and delays and things like that you know things that you've got this fundamental sound and it's harmonics and then you start getting these reverberation effects which starts to color the sound you know that's why they you know reverberation can really dirty up things really quick and cause muddiness when you don't want to use quite so much, you know, unless you really want the cathedral effect, you know, because it really quickly can make a mess out of a really nice production, you know, and we go on to things like, you know, intermodulation distortion. There's a video on my channel about it. Um, I got into some of that stuff. And once I realized I was getting way out of a music production, you know, audio engineering, I kind of backed off a little bit. But this is one of the things that I ran into. And there's a video on that. These are two frequencies interacting with each other, causing all this mess. So it is, you know, something you want to be aware of. You know, when you get into things like vocals, you know, I've got a vocal here really mapped out well. That, you know, you've got the fundamental harmonic here. And you've got the you got the root you got the root you got the second harmonic which would be the even one octave up, and then you'd be coming to the third harmonic would be that fifth. You've got the root again going to the third above that, the fifth above that, the flat seventh above that, back to the root again, and then it's taking whole steps going down to half steps, and then it just continues into smaller segmented steps as it goes down. And this is a complex sound like vocals. The vocal transducer is very complicated sound. And, you know, you really need to kind of look at that site about calculations and, you know, and research that a little bit. Just to have an understanding of what you're doing. That way also that you can freeze some area and see if there might be a problem with the sound. You can get out the calculator, figure out where the harmonics are coming off that, which harmonics they are, and, you know, figure out what is the problem. Find harmonic distortion you know and things like that because all different sounds are a little bit different this is a vocal this right here is a square wave it's a square wave basically mapped out and you can see here here's the first octave going up to that fifth and it's you know the third harmonic the fifth harmonic the seventh and the ninth and so on and so forth and you can kind of see how that's mapped out and there's a sawtooth waveform which is even in on harmonics, it's pretty even with a nice slope going down and you get into stuff like, you know, bells, you know, bells, I got them bell mapped out here. And it's, you know, a very complicated sound a bell is. A bell is a really, trying to map it out is very complex. It's a complicated sound, it really is. You know, depending on how it was constructed and things like that, it's very interesting. Drums, you can look at drums and immediately see that drum is, drums are really, they are, are a basically a percussive mess, to be honest with you. They just are because it's really hard to point out anything going on there. It looks like damn noise file that has been sculpted into that waveform. Does it on the spectroscope, right? Because it's really messy. And you've got a fundamental area here that's more than likely got is suit shooting for some kind of fundamental frequency. You can see right here when the initial hit hit that it's really fundamental right there and everything else is a component but a mess because everything looks like way, it looks like upper end harmonic distortion, noise and saturation on normal sounds. And so drums, things, percussive things like that can be, you know, you're trying to figure out what that is. The harmonic content, it's not really musical, you know, and it's percussive. And so picking apart percussive qualities that are needed and what to attenuate and boost to make it sound as good as possible or to change it because you might EQ it to where that drum sounds as good as it possibly can as you've equalized it now it sounds as good as that drum possibly can and you might want to re-equalize it because that actual drum you recorded doesn't sound that good so you want to equalize it a little bit differently to attenuate or boost you know parts of it that you know aren't weren't part of the drum in the way it was constructed and to make it sound better and you know i mean it's showing that kind of stuff you know noise you know you're looking for noise also besides looking at things what we've been talking about you're also looking for noise on the noise floor normally this would be this is an actual noise file of a white noise but actually normally it would be way down there and you can see it on most you know sounds you'll be able to see some of the noise floor down in there does that make sense up and this one i do believe i had low pass filtered this at 16 kilohertz but it's still down in there and you know that it's 
it, 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 it's a lot of times more visible than other times, but most of the time you'll ever be able to see some of it, you know, up in between there, especially, you know, where frequencies are farther separated. As they get closer together, it's really hard to see it. It becomes like sideband distortion and adding to bandwidth in a really high upper end frequency range, depending where the root is at. But those are some of the things we're looking for, you know, and basically when we're dealing with music production, that it's not really that difficult, you know, and when we're getting on a spectrum meter, I basically we are going to look at some other spectrum meters to really kind of take a look at some things. But the fundamental focus, try to remember that you're working with music and music production, and it's not really likeliness, you're really into sound sculpting that you're going to need to pull out something like MATLAB or something like that to work with your spectrum. Does that make sense? And you really need to understand, you know, the limitations of the spectrum meter that you have, but also understand that for the most part, it's really going to help you. It's helping you work with music so that you it doesn't become so technical and so mathematical and so you know quote unquote nasa kind of experiment that you just get lost in the technicalities rather than just focusing on it listening for problems and then visualizing problems that way you have you can see both areas sometimes you can hear things or see things better does that make sense and it's like they supposed you're supposed to use them together to to look for issues to and and to and be able to fix problems and to you know create and 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 uh re-sculpt things when you're equalizing or sound sculpting and things like that to visualize what the heck's going on as you're doing it but for the most part this is like the spectrometer in my DAW. I use Studio One, but whatever DAW, we're going to go through the basic functions of them, what we're looking for, and it should be pretty easy for you to get out your manual for whatever spectrometer you're using in your DAW so you can see how it's showing you the information that we're talking about because it may be showing it to you a little bit different. It may have some other aspects to it that show it to you. It has some cool things that might be different than some other dot or you might be able to get a real nice spectrometer that gives you all kinds of cool information like a desktop one or something you know that you spent five thousand dollars on you know that was a nice one bro you know it's like but your dot should give you most the basic tools and the spectrometer that should be the you know work just fine to get done what you want you know as you get more money it's okay to buy a real nice spectrum reader or even a six thousand dollar desktop one if you are really into it and that's okay just as long as you don't spend a bunch of money you don't need to and think you need to spend five hundred thousand dollars you know and buy, build a nasa rocket ship you know to make yourself a reggae song or something you know does that make sense you know and so just be very mindful of that so as we get into this we are most definitely going to look at the basic spectrum meter first that we have inside of our DAW and the information, the most basic information it's showing us and things to look for and just so we just kind of get familiar with it and then we'll look at some other spectrum meters in like RX and MATLAB to really get some detailed information so you can understand some other things that are going on there so that you know you can take that into consideration if it's not showing it to you and you can understand the difference of having a really nice spectrum meter rather than the one you're using in your DAW that you can understand that you might not missing a whole lot that you really need for what you want to do until you get to a point to where you are doing stuff that is very detailed and very you know delicate work if that makes sense so i hope you enjoyed this first video we start looking at spectrometers kind of what we're looking for and i get, want you to get out your spectrometer from your daw so we can you can go along with me and kind of look for the things that we're talking about so you can get a really good understanding of what's happening with one of the most fundamental tools in your daw to analyze sound Peace, hope, love. I hope you enjoyed this first video on our spectrometers, and I will see you in the next video.